Riding at Assumption Grotto in 1959. This was at 8 o'clock in the morning, 8 o'clock mass, right after mass, the gathering outside on the church steps. You can go ahead. You can see uh, Yeah, this was a big day. This is Grandpa Boyle there calling. That's uh, Dolores from New York coming down. I'm going to take a picture. There's uh, Grandma Boyle. Jeannie Blake and Bridesmaid. Right at Gratiot Avenue. There's Uncle Frank with the camera taking a picture. There's Johnny in, in the background right behind Mary Ann Weiss, who was a uh, matron of honor. This is at the Friendly Sons of St. Patrick's at the reception after the wedding. We're dancing to the modern music. And uh, doing the light fantastic. There's Tony Tunner and his wife, Bridie, who now live in Chicago. In the background, there's uh, Jimmy Holland and Winnie O'Grady. There's Mike Norton and his now wife, Jeannie Blake. There's Mae Freeman and her husband, who is now deceased. There's Bob uh, Jones and his wife, Nora Blake. There's our wedding cake. There's Aunt Catherine doing the needful, cutting up the kid. That's Peg's sister. There's Dolores from New York. There's Tommy O'Halloran with the camera. There's John Keegan's wife in the blue. You see Dolores uh, cut the bouquet. There's uh, Cousin Terry. We call her Aunt Terry, my father's first cousin. Grandpa Oil. There's the ladies from the Friendly Sons that help. Uh, there's Mrs. Judge who helped prepare the food for the wedding. There's Winnie O'Grady to the left. There's Tom O'Brien in the background feeding up on his plate. There's Grandpa. There's Jerry McMahon. There's Aunt Mary. There's John Fitzsimmons and his wife. There's Jimmy Holland with his hand behind his head. There's Pat Griffin. There's John Keegan. There's Grandpa and Grandpa Boyle in an eight-hand reel. There's Winnie O'Grady and there's Jerry McMahon and his wife. There's Packy Trainer right on the right. Here we are closing out the eight hand rail. This was taken in Ireland in 1966. This is my sister Mary, who's married to Louis Waters now. That's Caroline Clark, baby Caroline. It's Anne and Charlie's baby. Here we are going into the north end of Dublin. And as you can see, there's the Guinness Brewery building in downtown Dublin. And uh, now we're traveling down O'Connell Street. Here we are outside the American Embassy in Dublin. And this is the parking lot in the airport in Belfast. We're going down, to, we went down up to the north uh, to pick up my brother Eric and his son Jimmy who were coming in for the wedding for Cal's, uh, for the get together in 1966. Here comes Eric and his son Jimmy coming in from uh, London. There's my sister Bridge, who was single at the time. There's brother Eric, brother Cal. And there's Caroline in the pram.
There's Aunt Carol. There's my sister Anne. There's Breege. Jimmy. Uncle Cal. Uncle Eric. There's Aunt Carol, Cal's wife. That's the car that we leased, the little Morris Minor. And here we're standing outside 78 Pierce Park in the dark, Sunday morning. There's Anne going home with Caroline, pushing the pram. There's Mary with little Jimmy. Mary was single at the time. She's married now, married to Louis Waters. There's my sister Laura, who still lives at 78 Pierce Park. There's Grandma Brannigan. That's next door neighbor. Next door neighbor. There's my sister Kathleen, my mother's brother, Uncle Michael. Kathleen's now married. She's uh, married to Jimmy Curtis. They have two little boys. There's Caroline. Caroline's a school teacher in Dublin right now. This is, uh, we're going touring around Ireland. Ma'am and I, there's, uh, Oh, here's our, our, uh, our own kids in the backyard. There's Tommy's children, Patrick. There's uh, Tommy and Uncle uh, Fred from North Dakota, Fred Colby. There's uh, Kitty. There's Patrick, Beatrice, <coughs> Tommy. There's Kitty Colby. There's Uncle Fred right across from Assumption Grotto. Here's Aunt Catherine. There's Mary Ann, Irmo. There's Pete Torres, Mary Ann's husband. Here's little Peggy. There's Patricia Weiss. There's Francis Weiss. There's Fred Colby Jr. There's Peggy and Beth Ann. There's Jimmy on the left. The group of cousins, there's Cecilia. And Kitty behind her, Patricia Weiss, Rosemary and Jimmy, there's tall Freddie, there's Francis Weiss. There's Mary Ann and Pete Torres, they're just married. There's Catherine and the three sisters, Catherine, Peggy, and Mary. I was outside 14106 Maple Ridge, Detroit. This is Syracuse, New York, when Tommy was stationed in Syracuse. He was uh, with the Air Force and he was going to college at Syracuse University. And on our trip there, we stopped by to see Tommy. This is out, uh, you know by his home near at Main Highway. There's Tommy's Mercedes that he brought back from Germany with him. There's Grandma and Irmo. Johnny had driven Grandma from Detroit down to visit Irmo in Syracuse.
Here we're back in Ireland. This is Anne with her daughter Caroline. That's her first baby. There's the old man smoking. More bad habits. This is a Sunday morning. This is Eric. There's Anne. There's Mary, Sister Mary. There's Cal. And there's Mam. There's Charlie. This was taken down at the key near Charlie's own, own home. <coughs> This was taken in Drada. We went uh, for a trip to Drada, which is 20 mi 26 miles south of Dundalk. And there's uh, St. Peter's Church in Drada, which houses the, the head of St. Blessed Oliver, or St. Oliver Plunkett. And uh, there's Mam and Mary and myself. These are the narrow little streets in Drada. There's Laura. Here we are at Shannon Airport. We are we're leaving Shannon for, for uh, coming back to the USA. And that's the Shannon River off to the left. That was a 707. It was before the 747s. There's the Modley group. There's Jimmy, Peggy, Beth Ann, and Rosemary in our backyard at 14106 6 Maple Ridge. This was our custom made swimming pool. This is back in Ireland. This is in Leitrim, the birthplace of Grandma Boyle, or uh, the home place of Grandma Boyle and the birthplace of Grandpa Boyle. This is uh, the roadway where Grandma Boyle grew up. This is uh, Patrick Boyle, Peg's first cousin. Uh, Sarah. These pictures were taken in 1972. This is taken in Clune. This is O'Higgins post office and shop. And the lady, Mrs. O'Higgins, which was a friend of Mrs. Boyle, Grandma Boyle, brought us around and showed us the home place where she was raised as a child. She showed us there the little hedge where they used to sit in when they were children. This is the laneway that they used to take when they went to school. This is the countryside where Mrs. Boyle was raised in Ireland, in County Leitrim. And this is Mrs. O'Rourke, and this is the, the homestead where the, the old home used to be. That's all that's left is that little piece of wall right to the right. That's the granary that Grandma always talked about when she, about where she uh, played when she grew up. 
That's the granary. And this is the little shoemaker's house, the little white one right there where she uh, used to stay when she was a child. This is O'Rourke's house right there. These are the fields. These are friends that knew Grandma Boyle when she was growing up. They were friends of her when she was a little girl being raised in Leitrim. There's Rins in Ballinamore. There's uh, Mark Boyle's home. And there's Jean Ann, Mark's wife. And here's Patrick uh, Boyle, Francis Boyle. There's Jean Ann and I having a good chat. There's Francis. And, uh, and there we are leaving Dundalk now. We're back in Dundalk. There's Aunt Laura in the blue. Aunt Carol in pink. There's uh, <coughs> Cat looking at the sunflowers. Okay, this is Dublin Airport in 1972 when we... Uh, all three brothers from the United States came home for Kathleen's wedding. There's Peggy and Uncle Cal and Carol. Here we are pushing out the luggage on the trolley at Dublin Airport. As you can tell, we had beautiful weather. Here I come with all kinds of suitcases. There's uh, Cynthia. Here's Don, just came in from Chicago with Veronica. This is Don pushing his uh, load of suitcases. And uh, these are the taxi drivers trying to find room in the taxis to get us back to the dock. There's Kevin, Brannigan, and Cal. There's Veronica in the red and Carol in the black. Here we are with Laura in the home at 78 Pierce Park and Dock. Seems like she's setting the table. There's Peggy. There's Eric all dressed up with his button ear. There's Mam and Caroline. There's Anne Marie, that's Anne's second girl. There's Anne and Laura. There's Veronica. This is the morning of the wedding. We're all heading for the church. Here's Kathleen coming out. And here's my father, James Brannigan Sr. There's Mam heading for the car. There's Kathleen. There's Laura. There's my dad, Lord Reston. There's Anne. Outside of the church at St. Patrick's Cathedral. There's the regular crew people heading in for 10 o'clock mass. This is after uh, the mass. Here we're coming out. This is Kathleen and her husband, Jimmy Curtis. There's Anne Marie in front. There's a sharp dude with a mustache on the left. There's Jimmy's sister on the left. There's two sisters. There's uh, Uncle Kevin and his wife Rose in the red, right behind my father on the left. There's Coleman, the photographer, trying to get everybody lo lined up. Mm -hmm. 
And there's Jimmy's brother, his best man, for the wedding. There's, there's the family. <coughs> then Doc. It's quite a group. It's quite a group. There's Mr. Curtis, Lord Reston, right beside one of his sons, Mrs. Curtis. There's Anne, Jimmy, Kathleen, Laura, my man. Here we are at Valley Mishkandlin Hotel, which is three miles north of the dock out on the Balorgan Road. And this is a AAA hotel tourist attraction. And uh, Kathleen was having her pictures taken here. We had uh, breakfast and reception at the Valley Mac Hotel. There's Jimmy and the best man. There's Kathleen and in the gardens at Valley Mac, which looked the very same today as they did then. They had a beautiful day for the wedding. Nice sunshine, nice and warm. <clears throat> Kathleen's carrying the Irish horseshoe traditionally for good luck. There's Caroline. There's Mr. and Mrs. Curtis, Jimmy's father and mother. There's my mother and father, Mr. and Mrs. Brannigan, Mr. and Mrs. Curtis, and Jimmy and Kathleen. There's all mom and dad and, and uh, the eight children with Jimmy. Starting, there's, uh, there's Mary, Don, Laura, my mother, Jimmy Curtin, his wife Kathleen, my dad, Ann, Eric, Reed, Cal, and myself. This was just before Easter. This was probably in, in the end of March. Bridge was in hospital expecting her baby, having her baby around Easter time, 1972. This is Jimmy Curtis's family with his brothers and sisters. Mr. and Mrs. Curtis. There's Patrick Boyle's children in County Carlo, uh, Sergeant, Sergeant Boyle and his wife Mary's children when they lived in County Carlo. <coughs> this is our trip when we went around Ireland to see uh, the sites. This is Killarney Castle in County Cork. Blarney Castle, 
This is the river that runs right by the castle. This was in late March. The streams were running pretty high due to the rains. This is the pathway that leads right up to the castle itself. This is a 14th, 15th century castle. The Blarney Stone is at the top of the castle. Irish folklore says that if there it is right up there, or right at that opening, if you kiss the Blarney Stone, you'll never be short of words. This is a big estate home that's adjacent right to the Larry Castle. Here you see somebody leaning down there to kiss the stone. You have to lean, lay, lay on your back and lean backwards to kiss the stone. This is the interior of the castle. As you can see, it's in ruins, which you can wander around and look and it gives you a good idea of what the castles look like. Taking pictures from the battlement up on top, you can see the surrounding countryside. The sheep with the new lambs just born in March, early spring. There's right where you kissed the stone, right there. Yeah, here's the workers at the castle. They're putting out the little benches see that the tourist season will be coming up pretty soon in the summer months. They put out the little benches so you can sit down along the pathway. This is the along the River Shannon. There we're driving through the countryside. This is Clonmel. One time in Irish history was a fortress. Driving through the small Irish towns and villages. Just about every small town has a statue of a lady. These are pictures out through the west of Ireland, just uh, along County Clare, County Galway, County Mayo.
See that donkey with his hooves all turned up for the want of taking care of? That's a lot of ass jackass. There's a little jaunting car. These are the lakes of Killarney right here. These are the Killarney Mountains. You can see where the clouds just come right down right over the top of them. Mom and I stayed at the Ryan Motel, which is very close to this area, and you could look out the window and see the clouds come right down over the mountains. This beautiful countryside, beautiful scenery. This is really a tourist attraction in July, August, in the warm months of the year, the summertime. These are some homes outside, uh, beside uh, Killarney Lakes. These are the famous Irish stone walls that you see all around Ireland. <coughs> this is a parking lot where they usually keep the jaunting cars during the tourist season. This is the car that we rented. Those are the black Angus cows that you see there in front. There's my sister Kathleen. She's at the airport. There's my dad leaving us off. This is when we were leaving Dublin Airport, heading back to the United States. There's uh, Don. There's Cal heading out with his luggage. There's my dad. There's Don's red car just gone. There's mine. Yeah, here it just started to rain just after we got inside the terminal. This is uh, scenery from Irish countryside on our way heading toward Shannon Airport. This is at Shannon Airport. We just picked up some goodies at the duty free store. And, uh, Heading for the Aer Lingus plane, getting back on. There's Carol and Carol, Kevin and Cynthia. <clears throat> Trying to dodge the rain. Well, here we take off from Shannon, heading for the old USA. Heading home.
because the Shannon Free Zone building sites These are pictures taken over Newfoundland, down through Greenland. This is 1982 in Ireland, and uh, this is inside my mother's home in 78 Pierce Park. As you can see, she has a, a brass collection. This is in the back room, the parlor, so to speak. And uh, Mom has collected all this brass over the years. Here's Laura in the kitchen. And my mother's hiding. Where is she? Here she is. There's Mom and Laura. Laura and Mom. Here's my brother Eric. I think they're complaining about taking the pictures. There's all my mother's half sets. Half sets of China. She has about I'd say 15 or 16 of them on display right there. There's my sister Anne. With a fuzzy head, a fuzzy hat. Jimmy Curtis, Kathleen's husband. There's Kathleen. There's Anne worried about her looks, her fuzzy head. very clear pictures. <laughs> There's Bridges little Padrick. That's her baby baby boy. Grandma holding them. Big, big blue eyes. There's my dad, the little Padraig.
Sister Anne holding baby. Those are the cardigans that Nora, Laura knits for all the for all the grandchildren. There's Kevin's Anne's boy. He's the baby. Anne's baby. There I got the screen set up. I was going to show some pictures. There's Anne Marie. That's Anne's second girl. There's Caroline for a long hair. And there's Anne, all dressed up for the pictures. Anne put the sheet on the wall because she didn't have curtains. There's Charlie, and Anne, Anne set up a nice supper. They call it tea, tomatoes and cheese, and the best of China. There's my sister Kathleen, Kathleen Curtis, and Jimmy. This is Kathleen's house out in Far and Drake. There's Elaine and Eon. Breeges, there's uh, Laura. These are Breeges' children. There's Laura. There's Ian and Elaine. And Poetry. There's Breege. Breach and Pat Gulligley, they live up in uh, New Haven no more. And this is their home up, up there. Now there's Pat right there. Pat and Podrick. Podrick mean the Gaelic for Patrick.
There's Kathleen leaving Eon back to school. He used to stop at Grandma's house for for dinner when he was going to the Christian Brothers. And Kathleen, when she was working in back houses, uh, used to leave him off at school. There's Mom. Laura's bike, Mom's new windows. There's Anne Marie, Anne. There's Elaine. There's my dad, Mom. There's uh, Pat Gulligley. There's Laura and Elaine. They've all grown up to be beautiful young ladies. This is uh, now eight, 1989, just about. Last of December, eight, 1989. Kevin's a big boy now. Anne Marie's engaged. Elaine is thinking about going to college. There's mom and dad. There's Eric chatting away, having his cup of tea. Dad down to his end of the table. That was dad, dad's end of the table where he could see everything that was going on. <clears throat> Studying up on the horses. There's Breach and Mam having a chit chat. And looking to see if there's anything to eat. Yeah, this is the back of the house, uh, Dad's garden, Mom's garden, where they have all the beautiful roses. This is Rosie and uh, Dad when we and myself when we were in Ireland. This is one of the old abbeys along the close to the to Dundalk. This is a, an old abbey, Bellefonte Abbey, one of the most famous uh, old abbeys in Ireland, I believe from the 13th or 14th century. This is typical in Ireland, you've got to watch the cows, you've got to drive around them. A lot of steaks right there. Yeah, we're coming into Waterford, I believe. Water, it is. Yeah, this is Waterford City Centre, Wexford, Rosslair. Here's where the where the ships come from uh, Europe, and the ferries come from France. Pull right in here at Rosslair. Beth Ann was there at one time. This is the Irish countryside, very dull and bleak. Looks like it's raining off in the west. <clears throat> I think this is 1983 when, when uh, Rosemary and I, we. Uh, toured around Ireland. This is one of the seaside resorts or the, the harbors.
plenty of swans in Ireland. These have, this is the lakes of Killarney. You see these beautiful swans, hundreds of them. This is in County Clare. There's Dad Lost again. This is the Muck Cross House, which is adjacent, or uh, right on the property of the Lakes of Killarney. You can see the mountains in County Kerry, and of course the lakes. Muck Cross House is the beautiful grounds. At one time this was owned by a very rich American who couldn't pay for the upkeep, so we give it back to the Irish government. And now it's a landmark, and it's... Uh, been taken care of by the Irish Historical Society and there's admission into the home which helps to pay for the upkeep of the home which is just a beautiful beautiful house altogether and they're renovating a lot of the inside of the home trying to upkeep and keep uh, all the oak furniture intact the library Here's some of the old Irish oak trees. They're thousands of years old. Rosemary and I walked up through this little area here, and we that's a holly tree that uh, Rosemary's sitting right beside. This is a clear stream with just pure water. You can drink that water. It's just beautiful. It comes right down out of the mountains. <clears throat> Well, there's Rosie going in a jaunting car. And this is Bunratty Castle with the flying the tricolor. Bunratty Castle. There's the flag of Munster with the three crowns on it, which denote the kings of Munster, Munster the province of Munster. There's the River Shannon right there and that flows right down into the Atlantic Ocean. You can see the traffic going right by on the main highway. Beautiful countryside. There's Rosemary hiding the money again. This is the Cliffs of Moher which is on the west coast of Ireland. And uh, these are seven to over 700 feet high from the top of the cliffs to the to the base of the where the water comes right up again the base of the mount the cliffs and uh, the water is relatively calm right now but in the winter months real severe storms and tides just lash up again the mount the the, the mount. Just beautiful scenery for miles and miles. You get this is the Atlantic Ocean looking west. The only bit of land you see from there on out is America. This is a pathway right to the top, and this at one time was a, a lookout, a small castle. The Atlantic Ocean.
All the seagulls make the nests along the cliffs. We are in Knock Ireland, which is in County Mayo, and uh, this is where Our Lady appeared to some peasant children and people in the late 1800s. It's a place of pilgrimage, one of the most famous of Irish pilgrimage centers in Ireland. People from all over the world come here. Or Pope John Paul II visited uh, Knock, and recently they just opened up a new airport at Knock, and a lot of pilgrims come from England and from the continent. The beautiful grounds, just just beautiful. A lady appeared on the side of the church against the building. This was a, a memorial to the papal visit in 1979. It's modeled after the old Celtic cross, which was always a symbol of Irish unity with the church. This is the cathedral itself, which houses five, six thousand people, which is just a beautiful, beautiful church. That's a tapestry right behind the main altar of the notes, the, the appearance of Our Lady. And this is Munster Boys, which is between Drogheda and Dundalk, where the Brannigans have, uh, that's the homestead. This is one of the oldest graveyards, known graveyards in Ireland. And some of the crosses here, there's the big cross, which denotes a lot of the passages from the Bible, from the Exodus, from Egypt, from our Lord's crucifixion, and it's world famous. There's the tower, which at one time was a source of refuge for the monks in the old days when they were able to go inside the tower lock it up and then proceed up to the top of the tower. This is a sundial which is, you can see the hole right there. This was one way of being able to tell time in the early, early ages. We're talking about maybe years before Christ. But this is uh, Munster Boys Graveyard, just about eight, nine miles north of Drada, 20 miles south of Dundalk. And a lot of the Brannigan families are buried right here. They have, there's Patrick Brannigan, Newtown Munster Boys. That's part of the Brannigan plot right there. And people have been buried in this graveyard from the 12th century, so it is a very, very old graveyard. This is at one of the old abbeys, Mellifont Abbey, which they're trying to renovate and restore to part of its beauty. This is Roach Castle outside Dundalk, which was at one time a fortress which defended against the Normans, which was around the 12th century. And you can see that, that it, at one time it was really a fortress. When I was a child, a young boy growing up in Ireland, I used to play around here with a lot of my friends. It's about five miles west of Dundalk. We used to cycle out here and play around and climb the battlements. And, but over the years it's deteriorated quite a bit. But it is a great source of uh, enjoyment for young children playing around. And Rosie was pretty amazed at, at the thickness of the walls. And, and by telling it wasn't built in a day. There was a lot of caves and kind of dungeon type recesses down in through the building itself. Rosie got a little adventurous and did some climbing. But it's hundreds and hundreds of feet down to the base of the the castle on, on the west side. When Mam and I brought uh, the four younger children, uh, Eileen, Teresa, 
Michael and Terry, and this is taken at Rossi, County Leitrim. This is the home of Grandpa Boyle. This is where his mother and dad and, and uh, his brothers and sisters grew up. And this, as you can see, is, is uh, what they call Rossi. There's Michael and Terry coming down the laneway. And this is Mrs. Uh, the next door neighbor, John and Ma and Anne Raglan. And this is when we went with Mam's cousins. We went to the old graveyard at Rossi at, at Ben Burb, Clintibrant to try and find the old Boyle graveyard, the stones where the great-grandpa Boyle was buried. We didn't find it. But this is the old house where Grandma Boyle, Marguerite, grew up where she used to stand with her uncle right in that little house to the left. And uh, he was a shoemaker and he used to make the little shoes right in there and he used to look out that window there's Teresa and Ma'am and Terry. And that's the granary, which is still intact. There's Eileen. But there's, there's the little house right there. And uh, it's the same as it was back uh, 75 years ago. And the weather in Ireland this, that summer was just beautiful. This is the little car we rented. It's just as much as it had come in. But this is the countryside uh, we've seen before in Leitrim. And uh, there's the home that Grandma Boyle, Grandma Boyle said that uh, they built by hand. There's the little house right there from one side of it. all grown over with weeds and trees and there's the gable end of the granary right there with, with all the the moss and roots and weeds growing right out of it. There's the base, the foundation of the old granary right there, the steps. It's all caved in and dilapidated. But this is the countryside in County Leitrim. Beautiful scenery, beautiful trees. This is in County Sligo. This is just right across the Leitrim border, just, uh, I would say, seven, eight miles north of Sligo town, right out, pretty close to the Atlantic. This is a waterfall that we were able to children were able to walk up and look at. Uh, due to the extreme heat that summer, there very, wasn't very much water. They say that uh, you would not be able to walk in that area had they had a very wet spring. But this was an extremely warm summer, and there was very little water of any. But it is a beautiful sight. It's one of the tallest uh, waterfalls in Ireland. Beautiful, clear, cold water. And uh, this is looking at into County Leitrim because we're right on the border of the County of Leitrim and the County of Sligo. There's an island right out there in the, in the middle of the water, and you can see the cattle grazing out there, and they taking it easy. Mm -hmm. Well, here we are in Salt Hill, right outside Galway, right out on the arm of uh, the Atlantic Ocean. 
There's Terry. Those little buggies you can rent and drive away. There's Michael and Terry. Worried mom walking beside him. You can't trust the traffic in Ireland. Well, there they go pedaling away and I'm taking pictures. Well, there they're gone for an hour. Now, here we are again along the cliffs of Moher. Eileen, Michael, Teresa. And there are some fishing boats right down into the harbor itself. This is in the summertime in June and July, July I believe. Here we are in uh, Bunratty Castle, and right beside Bunratty Castle, they have some of the old thatched Irish cottages. And uh, you can see the thatch where they started to retach it on the top, put a new layer of thatch, which is straw, hay. And the uh, kids are going in and out of the Irish cottages looking at the Irish goods. Irish baking. This is right up on the top of Bel uh, Bunratty Castle. The Irish graveyard this is along the lakes of Killarney again, which is just beautiful to see. Moving on to the lakes of Killarney, here we are in the jaunting car. So, Mamma the kids takes off on the jaunting car. See how calm the water is, just beautiful and clear and warm. One of the nicest summers they've ever had in Ireland. There's McCross House, right on the lakes of Killarney. And uh, you can see all the jaunting cars. Everybody getting ready to take off on their tour. Well, there's Mam and the kids down by the holly tree again. There's Michael and Terry all the way ahead, all the way up uh, 
climbing up through the rocks and away up the, to the top of the falls. This is looking from the top of Killarney Castle, Killarney Castle. Bunratty Castle, I should say. They're as high a mountain as you'll find in Ireland. There's a lot of sticks. There's men taking pictures on the jaunting car. <clears throat> there comes the group again. Uh, there's Teresa going to kiss the Blarney Storm. She loves it. Some boys holding her by the waist. There's Eileen. Eileen kisses it too. Here we are back in the dock. There's Eric and Dad. There's Caroline. Oh, this is the day we are leaving. There's Kevin and Eon. There's uh, Laura. And there's my sister Laura, ma'am. There's my dad. Peg. There's Breach. There's Eileen. Anne Marie. There's Anne. She hi hiding. She doesn't want to get into pictures. There she is again. Anne doesn't want to get into pictures. Well, it's always a sad day leaving. And there's the kids going to pack it all in a van. A friend of Laura's that owned a van came down and uh, took all the luggage back with us, put it, uh, put it all in the, in the van. Uh, there's the green van that we all travel back to uh, Dublin Airport in. There's Mam taking pictures. Derek making sure all the luggage is in. There's my dad. That's the last time a kid seen my dad, right there in that picture. Yeah, 
Yeah, this is uh, Central Michigan University. This is uh, Peggy's apartment in Mount Pleasant, Michigan. This is her graduation from college. Here she's coming down with her cap and gown. There she is, all set. Another milestone. There she is. We can tell it's a windy, windy day. Everybody's holding on to the hats. What year is that, Paul? Same year. 1983 is Peggy's graduation from, from uh, Central Michigan University. You can see Rosie and Eileen, Terry. This is the opening ceremonies where the faculty members march onto the, the stadium field. This is the CMU uh, field in Mount Pleasant. It was a warm day, but it was windy. There's Peggy there. I don't think you can see her. There she is, right in the middle. There's some kids there, all right. Looks like 20,000 people if there's one. The graduates march in and then they take their place in the stands and then as uh, after the announcements and speeches by all the dignitaries then they present all the graduates with their diploma a certificate of uh, diplomas There's all the kids all lining up. There she is, she got her diploma. There she comes. There she is. Four long, hard years. And now this is the end of the ceremonies where, where everybody leave. Here's everybody there. There's Paul up here on the left and his sister Debbie. There's Rosie, Debbie, Mom, Paul. The state of Michigan flag. There's Eileen, her Irish sweater. There's cheerleader Matt. <laughs> uh, 
this is uh, this is Jimmy's house in in the outside of Grand Rapids in Kentwood, south of Grand Rapids. And this is uh, Kathleen Grace, Jimmy's little girl. And that's that's the little dress that Laura, my sister Laura, knit, knit, knit for her, uh, sent it from Ireland. Little peach co colored suit. And there's Susie in the background. Have to shoot the photographer. Four one oh nine Maple Ridge, in Detroit. Big yellow brick home. There's Assumption Grotto off to the right. That's the gymnasium. And then we lived there from 1965 on through to 1980 on Maple Ridge. This is when we moved into that home first where you see all the big bushes in the front three three uh, story yellow brick home there's one for 106 Maple Ridge that was a two-family home and there's our 1963 uh, Ford Fairlane 500 four-door that was a two-family the Witakowski's Polish family Annette some of our, one of our sons and some of our daughters lived upstairs from us. And uh, there's Milgard's, that was my first truck with Milgard, with Seema Milgard. That was probably 1966. There's our big begonias right there in front. There's our screened-in front porch with all the glass. We could take those out and put in all the screens in the summertime. Mm -hmm. uh, there's all the kids outside. There's Kathy McPherson in the front. front. There's Peggy, Rosemary, Eileen, Jimmy. Maybe that's bad there. There's Peggy and Rosie and Jimmy. And there's uh, Laurie Barto and Susie Barto. There's Beth Ann right there at the bottom with Kathy McPherson. That's Eileen. The baby is Eileen. This is Assumption Grotto School. School, uh, the old school. There's uh, Bishop Breitenbeck, who was bishop at the Assumption Grotto School. This is the children's first communion day, Rosemary's first communion. There's the rectory at Assumption Grotto to the right. There's the Weiss family on the right coming out. There's Joey, Francis, and Patricia in the blue with the white hat. Just mass confusion. Uh, 
There's Mrs. McIntyre with her two daughters, with the left with the black black with the black hat, right here in the front. And there's everybody. There's uh, Rosemary, Jimmy, the Dan. There's Patrick Weiss, Peggy. There's Johnny, Grandma Boyle. Peg, there's Aunt Mary. There's Bishop Brighton back. There's Mom talking to Bishop. There's Rosemary with the Bishop. And there's Patrick Weiss and Peggy. Little Peggy's off to the right there. There she is. And Beth Ann's in behind her again. There they are. There's Patricia Weiss in the back in the blue. These are the pictures taken on, on Maple Ridge. There's Beth Ann, Peggy, Eileen, Francis Weiss. There's Maureen Weiss. There's Patricia. And there's uh, Patrick uh, Weiss and, and Rosemary. There's Beth Ann jumping up and down. And there's Grandpa Boyle. There's Uncle John. There's the parade. There's Mary and uh, the there's Rosemary and Patrick standing on the lawn at 14106.